I'll see you a quarter, and I'll raise you a quarter. By the way, Rose, your shoe is untied. <laughs> I'm too smart for you, Sophia. You're not going to distract me this time. Besides, I'm wearing pumps. <laughs> your pump is untied. <laughs> Thanks. you cheating. Ma, you're out of the game. Hey, give me a break. When you're 80, you're allowed to cheat, just like you're allowed to take money out of your daughter's purse. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, was that the phone? Don't trouble yourselves. I'll get it. How did you know your mother was cheating, Dorothy? Uh, because Mr. Feinbaum never walks around totally naked. <laughs> always wears a Boy Scout neckerchief. <laughs> but never in the same place twice. Which is why there's no Mrs. Feinbaum to you. Hey, did you see that, Dorothy? It was a UFO. Oh, Rose, don't be ridiculous. It was a plane deal. Come on. Planes don't fly over residential neighborhoods. Neither do UFOs. They only fly over empty fields in Kentucky. <laughs> Fat guys in overalls named Cooley have just run out of gas. I think we ought to call the authorities. Rose, there was no such thing as a UFO. They were probably looking for someone to bring up to the ship. Fine, then you stay out here, flag them down if they fly by again. I'll go inside and pack a bag. Well, I want to be the one to go. Whose bag do you think I'm going to pack? Chips Ahoy and Superman couldn't see right through. <laughs> I just got off the phone with Ham Lushbow, who happens to be the most charming, most intelligent, most gorgeous, most sexy man on the face of this entire planet. We went to college together. Look, there's his picture. Wow, oh. sure is handsome. Oh. Yeah, what did he have to say? Oh, that he's in town on business and that he's single again and that he'd love to be my date for the museum ball Saturday night. The museum ball? Didn't Roger Clark postpone his kidney transplant so he could be your date? What's your poem? Sorry to interrupt. Go on. Well, Dorothy, you have no idea how my sister Virginia and I used to chase after this boy. Well, everybody did. He had it all. Football star, champion debater, class valedictorian. How long did you and he date? Well, we didn't. But it wasn't because I didn't try. Oh. I can still remember the night of the big rally before the homecoming game. Oh, there stood Ham, just handsome as ever. I walked over to him and asked him the one question that had been burning on my tongue for the last four years. Ham, think you might like a little company tonight? You know what he said? Maybe some other time, Blanche. Can you believe that? Maybe some other time. Blanche, that doesn't seem so mean. He had the band spelling out on the field. <laughs> and Dorothy, to this day, Ham Lushbell remains the one man in my entire life I could not conquer. The one. But come Saturday night, I have a feeling my record's going to be intact again. <laughs> I wouldn't be so sure if I were Blanche. Sometimes these things aren't meant to be. Like me and Fabrizio Rubino. <laughs> we were on the verge of a passionate love affair when Destiny intervened. Don't tell me. His wife, Destiny Rubino. <laughs> Why, boy, did she have a temper. She dragged him away by the hair on his back. <laughs> smashed his skull with a ravioli crank. <laughs> and threw his limp body in the river. <laughs> That's a Sicily you don't see on postcards. <laughs> with 
the flashlight in a pie pan. I read an article once in the St. Olaf Time that says this is the best way to do it. What's the St. Olaf Time? Well, it's 7.15 here. You should try to get it. This nonsense has to stop, Rose. What we saw was not a UFO. Well, it wasn't a plane. Planes aren't that thin or that bright. Neither is Oprah Winfrey, but that doesn't make her a flying <laughs> saucer. The point is, nobody knows what we saw. You don't. I don't. Not even Major Barker does. Major Barker? Duke, that's the man I spoke to today down at the military base. I told him what we saw, and he said they'd check into it. Rose, how could you do that? Don't you know what's going to happen? This is going to end up in all the tabloids. I can see it now, right next to Woman Gives Birth to Doc Severance and Lookalike. <laughs> Dorothy Spornak meets Spaceman. Uh, why do you get all the credit? Girls, girls, look. How do I look? Great, Blanche. Great? Uh, or gorgeous? Gorgeous. Well, what about sexy? Yes. Enticing? You know, I'll handle this. Blanche, no woman ever looked better than you look right now, and no one ever will. <laughs> Thank you, darling. <laughs> Honestly, Rose, sometimes it's like pulling teeth to get a little compliment out of you. <laughs> There's the bell. That must be Ham at the door. Come on, come on. <laughs> Sophia, wait, 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 wait a minute. Blanche, will you calm down? I have never seen you so worked up over one date. Dorothy, I let this gorgeous man slip through my fingers once before. I don't intend to let it happen again. on our wall. I don't blame you for looking surprised, Blanche. There's a little more of me than there used to be. Well, maybe a little here, a little there. Um, I'm Dorothy. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, this is my mother, Sophia. That's Rose. Hello. How do you do? So, what exactly is ham short for, ham? <laughs> my guess would be ham and potatoes. <laughs> Well, we'd better be running along. We don't want to be late. Yes, I'm sure you'll have a wonderful, wonderful evening. It was very nice meeting all of you. Same here. I hope we get to see more of you. Don't even bother. <laughs> different from his picture. You know, sometimes people can lose their looks. Not in Sicily. In Sicily, if you're born beautiful, you stay beautiful. The whole town sees to it. They check up on you. They encourage you. They never let you slip. That's why we were so happy when Dorothy was born. <laughs> Who needed all those people bothering us all the time? <laughs> I'm going back outside, Dorothy. Bye. Is Rose Nyland in? Uh, yes, please come in. Please come in. You must be the man that uh, Rose spoke to, Major Barker. That's correct. Please sit down. Listen, um, before I get Rose, let me assure you, she is the only one here who thinks she saw a UFO. No, I understand completely, Miss Bornack. By the way, is that Miss Bornack or Mrs.? I'm hoping it's Miss. Well, yes. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it is. <laughs> Good. I've already got that box checked on this form. <laughs> now, in this case, we've done most of the research at the base, so I just have a couple of routine questions to follow up. Question number one, was the object you saw more triangular or cylindrical? No, triangular. Was it blue in color? Yes. 
Did it leave a faint trail of yellow exhaust? Yes, it did. <laughs> Very good. Miss Bornack, there's a perfectly simple explanation for what you saw. Wow, I always knew there would be. <laughs> what you and Rose Nyland saw was a UFO. <laughs> Me laugh. It's nice to know I haven't lost it, all of it. Oh, now don't you talk like that. You haven't lost a thing. Why, the way you can tell a story, the way you twirled me around that dance floor, you'd think it was 30 years ago. Oh, gosh, look at the time. I better go. Oh, baloney, it's late now. In 10 minutes, it'll still be late. You just sit yourself down right there. Go on. That boy. I had a nice time tonight, Blanche. You know, I did too. And I wasn't sure I would, if you want the truth. What? Well, this may sound funny, but uh, I kept thinking, here I am, you know, so bald and so heavy, and what if I show up and Blanche looks just as pretty as she did 30 years ago? <laughs> but I don't. No, you don't. <laughs> better. Uh, Unless it's just my age making me want to see those things. No. <laughs> I'm glad I looked you up, Blanche. I haven't had this much fun in a long time. Well, I guess I better be getting back to the hotel. Oh, honey, are you sure you have to? Blanche, are you asking me what I think you're asking me? Well, you might like some company tonight. Maybe some other time, Blanche. <laughs> or anything. I'm just a teacher. A substitute teacher. A divorced substitute teacher who can't even afford her own place to live. Beam me up! Beam me up, Dorothy, you believe? Rose, they checked out what we saw and it actually was a UFO. That would be fine with me. Dorothy, why are you talking that way? I think it's wonderful that there are other beings out there trying to meet us. They might have solutions to all our problems. Cures for our diseases. New storylines for Alf. They might also have tentacles on their legs so that they can suck all the blood out of our heads. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Rose. I'm sorry. Now, part of me is very excited, but part of me is petrified. I cannot relax with this. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to because Major Barker does not want us to say a word about this to anyone until we hear from him again. Not a word. Is that understood? Yes. I thought I heard voices in here. What you girls do? Oh, nothing. We're just sitting, talking. I'm not talking about anything special. The subject of aliens never came. <laughs> well, I can give you something to talk about. My date tonight, which turned out to be the most humiliating evening I've ever spent in my entire life. So, what are we talking about? Blanche's date. He turned me down again. 
I'm just devastated. Oh, come on now, Blanche. You said yourself you didn't find him that attractive anymore. That's not the point, Dottie. The point is to Blanche Devereaux, sexuality and attractiveness are two very important things. They are Blanche Devereaux. <laughs> it just tortures me to know that there's one man out there, one on the face of God's green earth that I cannot have. <laughs> Especially if he's fat and bald. <laughs> Forget about it. I can't forget about it. But there's only one thing for me to do. I'm going to call him up. And tomorrow night, I'm going out with that man again. I don't care what amount of seducing it takes. But as God is my witness, I am not returning to this house until he has begged, beseeched, and pleaded with me to go to bed with him. <laughs> You know, that was the original ending to Gone with the Wind. Oh, that was a terrific meal, Blanche. Thanks again. Oh, you're welcome, Pam. I just figured you deserved it before going back to that high-tension, dog-eat-dog pressure pit you work in. Blanche, I run a miniature golf course. Your champagne, Miss Devereaux? Oh, thank you, Walter. You will forgive me if the champagne has a little effect on me. Sometimes just having it sitting on the table sets my heart to race. Oh, feel. Lower. No, it's like there's some kind of wild animal energy in there. some other time, Blanche. That does I will not let you humiliate me any longer. You may not want me ham lush now, but I can promise you somewhere on this planet I will damn sure find some man who does. When Blanche Devereaux sets out to seduce a man, she doesn't drag her feet. <laughs> Blanche! Well, Pam Lushbow, you sex-hungry devil! <laughs> now, I told you, no more. Go home and take a cold shower. No, Blanche, not until you know the reason why I keep telling you that I can't sleep with you. But, Ma, listen, maybe, maybe watching some TV in another room might be a good idea. Fine, Dorothy, but keep the volume down. Ma! It's all right, Dorothy. It's already out in the open anyway. Come on in and say your piece. Well, the reason is we've been getting along so well as friends lately that I didn't want us to have another night like that night we had in college. In college? What are you talking about? That night, to Spring Jamboree out at Grady's Motor Lodge? Grady's Motor Lodge? I never went to Grady's with you. Sure you did. I'll never forget it. I mean, you had your hair in braids, you wore a pink bathrobe. Pink? With a little lace trim? Yes. And matching slippers? Yes. Ham! That wasn't me. That was my sister Virginia. You can't... That was Virginia. How could I forget that? That was the worst night I've ever spent in bed with a woman in my life. <laughs> Wait a minute, Ham. Are you saying the only reason you've kept turning me down is because of the bad time you had that night? Yes. <sighs> oh, well, Blanche, this changes everything. Does all that stuff you said in the restaurant still go? 
I don't think so, Ham. <laughs> the moment has passed. We could never recapture it. Max, that was just 20 minutes ago. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ham, but you were just a plaything in my game of sexual conquest. I was going to use you. Use me. Use me. <laughs> Goodbye, Ham. If you leave now, we can still have our memories. I'll trade all my memories for a quickie. <laughs> Beat it, Tabo. <laughs> oh, I wonder what would happen if somebody called up my sister Virginia and told her this terribly embarrassing story. I guess there's only one way to find out. <laughs> well, I'm exhausted. I'm going to bed. You coming, Ma? In a minute. I gotta finish this article. I love these military guys. First, they fly this top secret bomber jet way off course. Next, they start denying it ever happened. Like nobody ever saw it flying over downtown Miami. Rose. Hi, Dorothy. Rose, there's something we have to talk about. There was an article in today's paper. The one about the UFO being a secret bomber? I'm sorry, Bruce. Sorry for what? Just because that one bomber wasn't a UFO doesn't mean we should stop watching for others. Does it? <laughs> oh. Well, I guess there isn't much point in sitting out here anymore, is there? Oh, I don't know, Bruce. Such a nice night. Let's stay a while. Okay. You know something, Dorothy? You don't have to tell me this if you don't want to. But underneath it all, you believe in them, don't you? You did from the very beginning. Oh, I'm glad. It's more fun. It's like with Santa Claus. The best Christmas we ever had was when all eight of my brothers and sisters, from Lily to Michael, all still believed. That must be ten years ago now. <laughs> Dorothy! Dorothy! charity softball game on the hottest day of the year. I know it. I'm all hot and sweaty. I'm short of breath and I'm physically exhausted. <laughs> You'd think I had a good time. <laughs> you didn't have fun? Only thing I really enjoyed was stealing second base. When have you not enjoyed sliding under a man in uniform? <laughs> hey, it's hotter in here than it is outside. Oh, no. Of all days for the air conditioner to break down, we better call the repairman. Oh, his number's in the kitchen. So is the ice cream. We can have some while we're waiting. Mom, <laughs> what are you doing? I'm giving the leftover meatloaf a thrill. What do you think? It's hot as hell in here. Close it before the food spoils. Okay. <laughs> I meant the refrigerator. I'm going to call the repairman. I already did. He said he'd be over in 15 minutes. That was three hours ago. Well, let's break out the ice cream. What's this? I froze my underwear to stay cool. <laughs> I'd lend you a pair, but I knew I'm afraid they'd melt too fast. <laughs> This is incredible news. I've been nominated for St. Olaf Woman of the Year. Well, that's nice. Did the new TV guy come yet? <laughs> Blanche, you don't understand. In St. Olaf, this is the highest honor there is. 
Oh, I never dreamed that someone as unqualified as I am would ever be nominated for anything so important. I guess Dan Quayle really opened the floodgates. <laughs> Last year, Gretchen Lilyhammer won for running into the burning library and saving all the books. That is amazing. How'd she do that? She took two books in one hand and one in the other and ran like the Dickens. <laughs> the library only has three books. What happens when a person's read them all? I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> I'm going to go to my room and write down my achievements. You know, it doesn't matter whether I win. I mean, just being nominated is enough. Mm, that's a good attitude, Rose. It's also a crock of bull. I want that sucker banned. <laughs> Mrs. Fred, he's come to fix the air conditioner. Oh, thank God you're here. This heat's driving me crazy. You're not the only one. The old lady next door is running through a sprinkler in her underwear. There's no old lady living. <laughs> I'll tell you a very simple way to beat the heat. Just imagine yourself in a cool place. Like a snowy, windy mountaintop in Colorado. <laughs> With a ski instructor named Fritz. <laughs> and a bear skin rug and a bottle of brandy and a crackling fire. My God, Dorothy, it must be 120 in here. <laughs> Good morning, Rose. Dorothy, sometimes you can be so cruel. <laughs> Sandy, what's the matter? Everything. I just found out I'm the most boring person alive. Did something happen to Regis Philbin? <laughs> no. I was listing my accomplishments for the St. Olaf Woman of the Year, and it wasn't until I saw them in black and white that I realized my top accomplishments aren't worth a damn. Oh, come on. Now, Rose, you're forgetting how much you give to people. How about all that work down at the counseling center? That's right. Well, honey, you must have hundreds of people every year. All I do is talk to them. Big deal. Well, it is a big deal. Do you know how much a kind and loving word means to a person in despair? That is your gift, Rose, and I wouldn't take it lightly. You're just saying that. I haven't added anything to the world. Look, Rose... God doesn't make mistakes. We were all put on this planet for a purpose. Blanche, you are here to work in a museum so that art can be appreciated by humanity. Dorothy, you are here as a substitute teacher to educate our youth. And Rose, you are here because the rhythm method was very popular in the 20s. <laughs> Oh, come on. Rose, you just got up. With my life, it's not like I'll miss anything. Oh. Poor Rose. I hate seeing her so upset. She's just not very good at judging herself. She can't see all her accomplishments the way we can. You know something maybe all this resume needs is just a little punching up. You mean exaggerate the truth, create wild and colorful stories just to impress people? Dorothy, you can't do that. Oh, I know. That's my specialty. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Found a baby robin that fell out of its tree and returned it to its nest. Make that a baby eagle. Yeah. Eagle. And it happened during a big rainstorm. Rain. Storm. Which caused a mighty flood that covered all the land. Oh, Blanche, nobody in his right mind is going to believe this story. This is going to St. Olaf. Which caused a mighty flood. <laughs> this technique I read about to cheer myself up. You stand in front of a mirror and you tell yourself I love you and then you give yourself a great... Rose Nyland? Yes. Oh, it's an honor to drive the woman that beat out Emma Immerhofer for St. Olaf Woman of the Year. I beat Emma? Yeah, we thought she'd be a shoe-in. Running the orphanage, taking in the homeless, running up soup kitchens. Emma did all that. Oh, she's a saint. How did I ever beat her? Uh... Rose, 
there's something we have to tell you. You see, what um, Blanche and I did was, well... Rose, what Doc is trying to say is that we just love you so much, and, and we wanted you to win so bad that we fudged some of the things on, on your biography. Yeah. Fudged? Fudge makes it sound cute, you lie. We embellished, Rose. A Rose, you do good things. I mean, you are the kindest, most decent human being we know. You deserve to win. But you lied. Oh, I'm not going through with this. I can't go back to my hometown and do something that's against everything I stand for. I'm going to call St. Olaf and tell him we're not coming. A driver, you stop at the first phone. Great to be home. Oh, absolutely. You know, I have an irresistible urge to kiss every piece of furniture in the house. <laughs> you wouldn't if you had dates like other people. <laughs> oh, hi, Rose. Oh, Rose, now come on. You're not still mad at us because we changed your woman of the year application. Honey, we're so sorry. I just hate it when you're mad at us and get like this. Okay, you're forgiven. Oh, Rose. That was easy. <laughs> well, I thought it all over, and you were just trying to help me. And I can't stay mad at my best friends. After all, we've eaten over 500 cheesecakes together. <laughs> Besides, you weren't raised in St. Olaf. It's not your fault, you're chronic two-faced liars. <laughs> oh, I'm Harry Weston, and I'm not dressed. Thank God. Welcome home. Hi, Harry. What brings you here today? You called me and told me you were here. So I'm going to remember you asked me to save your mail for you. Oh, yes, I'm so lucky. Thank you, Harry. You're just about the sweetest thing in my whole zip code. I don't know why I haven't had you over to dinner. Well, that would be real nice. Yeah. I've also been meaning to talk to you about an examination. Blanche, I'm a pediatrician. Harry, I'm not sick. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I really have to go, and so does Dreyfus. That's why we're taking a walk, because we both really need to go. <laughs> That's not what I mean. I mean, I'll be walking, Dreyfus will be going. <laughs> See you all. Come on, Bye, 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 Boy, I know the prescription for me. One of him every four hours. <laughs> Is this for me? Oh, it's from St. Olaf. Blanche, hmm? what was all that stuff with Harry? You know, the man has not dated since his wife died. Well, you can't spend your whole life in mourning, especially when you're the most eligible bachelor in town. In Sicily, we have a simple rule. If your husband dies, you wait 20 years or until you grow a mustache. <laughs> Blanche, we all had an agreement. No one dates Harry until an appropriate amount of time has passed. I know, 18 months. I have it marked on my calendar with a big red circle. As of today, that man is in play. <laughs> I'm just amazed I was able to wait so long. He is so sophisticated and charming and rich and handsome. He fairly screams Blanche. <laughs> At least he will before I'm through with it. <laughs> Girls, look. It's the same old woman of the year trophy. It says here my one woman of the year after all because I embody the values of truth and honesty for which the award stands. What happened to Emma Immerhofer? She was disqualified when they found a skeleton in her closet. What was it? Mr. Immerhofer. <laughs> this thing isn't solid gold, is it? Oh, no, you just peel off the gold foil and it's pure milk chocolate. <laughs> That's the loveliest trophy I've ever seen. I'm going to get a knife. Rose, there is no way that we can tell you how proud of you we are. Oh. Sure there is. Congratulations, Rose Nyland. You are St. Olaf's Woman of the Year. Oof! <laughs>
Thank you.